and Becker says, well, he's dying by this point, actually. It's 1974. He's running out of time. He's in the hospital with cancer, writing his last book. And he's like, OK, let me give you some idea uh, of what the difference is uh, between what he would claim is a good culture and what he would claim is a, a less than good culture. And, and he says uh, four things that I'll talk about today. So good culture. The, the first thing that he says is that a good culture provides for the physical needs of its citizens given its current level of technology and, and its present access to natural resources. So let's just say that good culture provides for physical needs of its people within limits of technology and resources. How much time do we have, Jim, till the class ends? Oh, nice. I'm going to shut up within 15 minutes, so we, we have some time to talk. And so I just wanted to see where, where I'm at here. Um, the, the idea here is that you, you can't be worried about self-esteem or physical or psychological transcendence uh, unless you're still breathing, right? And in order to do that, uh, you've got to have enough to eat. You've got to have a place to live. Uh, you have to be educated in whatever sense of the word your culture employs that term. And so the primary responsibility of all cultures is to deliver the physical goods necessary in order to survive. Psychology types, who else talks about that? You've got to provide for physical needs first before psychological needs. Maslow, good. This is pure Maslow, and that's where Becker's getting it. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this except to point out to you that by, the sta by this standard, uh, how do we do as Americans? Huh? Terrible. How many Americans are starving? Yeah. Pardon me? 10% 10, 10 of the American population is starving by anybody's definition. Any homeless people in America? Oh. Unemployed? Uh, uninsured and uncared for medically? All right, are any of these things because we lack the physical resources to do them? Remember, we're a country that pays farmers to not grow food because we have so much of it. So just note uh, that uh, we have plenty of technology. We have plenty of resources. By this standard, uh, we are one of the most derelict cultures on the face of the earth in the sense uh, that no other culture has the potential to provide for its citizens to the extent that we do. And, and no other culture, one might argue, falls as short as we do in that regard. I don't mean that critically, but I mean it truly because it's the case. All right, now, let's think about that and just pursue this a little bit more. Uh, why is it that, um, why, why don't we feed everybody? When, when you ask uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, pardon me? Well, what do we lack, according to those guys? What do we have? We'd like to feed everybody, but we don't have enough what? What don't we have enough of? Anybody? What does everybody say? What, what's our big issue? Money, okay, now note, and this is important, we gotta take a five minute diversion to talk a little bit about money. All right, what is money? Good, money is useless abstraction that has no value whatsoever except to the extent that we agree that it has some. This piece of paper, ooh, it's a big one, money rules. Uh, in the Himalayas, unless I need toilet paper, this is worthless, right? This money, uh, by its definition, uh, all money is useless, its value uh, it depends on our mutual consent. And in fact, uh, this money used to be backed by what in the old days? Gold. Gold. What's it now backed by? Uh, zilch. Not zilch. What's it say on the back of every bill? Who are we trusting? Not gold. Trusting God. So note one of Becker's big points, which is money is the ultimate secular religious icon, functionally indistinguishable. Uh, from all other religious, economic, or political ideologies and, and should be seen for what it is in, in that regard. And, and all he asks us to think about is the awkward reality uh, that, in fact, 
we have plenty of technology, we have plenty of resources, we have plenty of people to do anything that we want. What we seem to lack is an adequate quantity of what he would consider to be a death-denying religious illusion, uh, much in the same way that he talks about uh, other such institutions. I'll just toss that out uh, as something for you to think about. Let me hide my money, though, uh, so that none of you take it. All right. Having said that, let's, let's move on to point number two, and that's that uh, it is also imperative that a good culture provide uh, for as many people as possible opportunities to feel good about themselves. Whoa. So here we get to the self-esteem thing. Good culture provides self-esteem. I'm going to abbreviate here and go for this. Self-esteem for as many people as possible. Obviously, this should follow from what I've said. If, if we take this idea seriously, uh, then we can also ask, relative to different cultures, how many opportunities are there in the culture for you to feel good about yourself? All right, now, if you're a Christian and, and you believe in Christianity, is everybody eligible for salvation? Yeah. Right, That's, uh, and, and in that regard, is not Christianity the ultimate egalitarian religion in that everybody is at least abstractly eligible for the main man to take you into his house forever, right? All right now, most of us, though, the, Ju the Judeo-Christian tradition in America has waned somewhat of late, uh, <laughs> to be somewhat understated. A and what is it now that we measure ourselves according to in American culture? Money. Money. Right, but how many of us can be fantastically wealthy in American culture? Good, and therefore the 99% that are not are what in the eyes of America? We're worthless failures right underneath whale shit at the bottom of the ocean. So note uh, that there's something else interesting uh, about American culture, and, and that is that we are in the interesting position of valuing that which most of us could not reasonably expect to have. Because if you don't have money, what should you have in America at least? What's that? All right, smarts, I, I, I think even being smart has become passe. Jimmy Carter was smart. Uh, pardon me? Looks, the two things are looks and money. Uh, especially if you're a woman. An ugly guy with cash can get away with it, uh, but if you're a woman and you look like you were walking to the bank and got hit in the face with a bag of nickels, you're in trouble. Or you've been playing goalie for the dart team. If you have a fire in your face and they had to put it out with a javelin, you're, you're in trouble. I have a few more of those. <laughs> that used to pass for humor in my college days. I still like it, though. Silliness is good. All right, now, but the point is to not be silly for a moment. Uh, that uh, Here's another instance where Becker would say, geez, we, we've got to take a look at what we're doing in our culture. And I would suggest to you that this is a real problem, that Americans are suffering from massive deficits in feelings of self-worth. One third of the American population uh, will have sought treatment for depression, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, by the turn of the century. There were 80 million Valium prescriptions doled out in this country in 1983 making Valium the third most consumed pharmaceutical on earth, right behind aspirin and vitamins. Uh, we got 50 million, conservatively speaking, uh, alcoholics, and, and so on and so forth. That doesn't even count like Republicans and other forms of pathology that, that uh, <laughs> I, I would argue uh, are, can only be understood in, in terms of the absence of self-worth. I didn't mean to get political. I couldn't help, couldn't, couldn't help it. Couldn't help it there, but anyway, uh, and of course, that if you feel free to disagree with me in that regard. The, the point is, and, and adolescent suicide is on the rise, and it's not the crack babies in Harlem that live in refrigerator boxes that are killing themselves. It's the white kids in the upper class suburbs uh, that are finding it very difficult to feel good about themselves in a climate of rising expectations accompanied by diminishing opportunities. And, and this is something we need to think about. Right, the third thing here is the idea that you accomplish these first two goals w without unduly inconveniencing other individuals either outside or inside of the culture that you reside in. All right, so let's say do one and two without 
hurting others